Let us slow down a little bit and start our day with God. Join us as we draw wisdom and inspiration from God's Word and walk through the joys and challenges of the day. Welcome to Mango Mornings with JV, Aya, and Bernie on Mango Radio, communicating the love of God. What is this life? What are we living for? When we encounter tough times, it's so easy to question, Where are you, Lord? Why is this happening in my life? You say you're good, but I can't feel it at this time. Friends, in this life, we will walk through valleys And it seems like the valley continues. <laughs> But one thing remains true. Even when we walk through the darkest valley, we are not alone. Because the one who gave up his life for us walks with us and reminds us every single step of the way. He is with us to guide us, to lift us up, and to bring us back to a good place. Hello friends and welcome to another Friday edition of Mango Mornings with your host Familiar Faces uh, Perhaps the ones that you have seen in their individual programs But now all here together joining me for this episode are none other than uh, Bernie <laughs> <laughs> Pastor JB here Michelle And yours truly, Aya. Once again, welcome to the Friday edition of Mango, Mango Mornings. Mornings. Good morning, everyone. Mango good morning. morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> And uh, you're tuning in once again to Mango Radio. We communicate, communicate the, the love of God. God. I like this. I can prompt you guys. Aha. Dili na ni katong sa tonga program ni. Mango Fresh. Wag mo na ibalik sa akin. Ano ka ba? <laughs> so, uh, friends, uh, today we will be joined by uh, two very special guests. Mm-hmm. Perhaps when you guys were tuning in to Sunny Side Up, you you might have seen them. Or, well, in in this case, you might have heard, heard. them. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yes. Yeah, But now, it is an opportunity. In December. Yes. December. Was it December? Yeah, December. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, now we have an opportunity to also see them. So uh, once again, hello to our YouTube watchers, mm-hmm. to those of you joining us on our replay. Uh, buenas dias, buenas noches. Yes, pa. <laughs> Whatever yes. time it is oh, that they may be later. watching yes. the replay. So sa replay natin kahit anong oras. But for our listeners tuning in on the radio, mm. uh, buenas dias. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, they can always tune in and watch the replay of our episodes. Not only the Friday episodes, but every single day, no, from Monday yes. to Friday, because Mango Mornings is streamed via YouTube from Monday to Friday at seven in the morning until eight thirty in the morning, and then my replay po tayo always in the afternoon from 5 p.m. to 6:30 p.m. So tell your friends about it, and if hindi nyo pa na follow or nakasubscribe, hindi pa kayo nakasubscribe sa ating YouTube channel, please uh, subscribe, uh, like, like every episode, <laughs> no? and then of course more importantly, no pressure. no pressure but you must do it if you wanna be you notified must. <laughs> the bell, don't forget the, the bell, bell button, notification the notification bell. button, so that every time mag live kami you will be notified mm-hmm. and automatic yeah. na yan mag appear sa inyo okay? so you, you won't miss any episode from Mango Morning. Once again, our YouTube channel is Mango Radio Philippines and mm-hmm. thank you so much to those of you who have already subscribed your prayers. Uh, thank you so much. We appreciate them. 
That is right. Well, we have ministry partners uh, supporting us sa ating uh, mga programa and of course, the continuous uh, uh, broadcast of Mango Radio. And Kairos Kitchen is one of them. Um, they are located at Inigo Street, Obrero, Davao City. They have a special treat for Christian organizations. No? Just visit their store or their shop and uh, they can get, cater all your special functions and uh, events. So they are open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day except Sundays. And for inquiries, you may call 0922-800-3005 or check out Kairos Kitchen on Facebook. Kairos Kitchen, celebrating life's special moments. Also, and, we. Mm-hmm. Sige, go. So today is February, so already, huh? uh, right. reserve your mga dates. Para sa mga mm. Valentine's dates True. and anniversaries, no, ng ating mga listeners. Right, and we are inviting car owners for car tinting and nano ceramic coating at Mask Pro Davao, located at Sobekari Street, Abrera Davao City, and. They offer a superb coating that yes. will give your car extra gloss, extra shine, and make it scratch resistant. Wow. Right. And they also offer a quality tint, which rejects heat and blocks the sun's glare without compromising your vision. And it also provides you added security by making your windows and windshields shatterproof. Ta-da. Right. And kaya kung quality tint and superb coating ang hanap mo, i-mask pro mo na yan. And for more information, call them at 0908-524-7777 or message them on their Facebook page. That's Mask Pro Davao. And greetings to all the staff in Mask Pro listening and watching. Mm-hmm. Sir Ryan Paco. Yes. Yes. Right, sir. Good morning. Good morning. The ladies, Ma'am Karen, Ma'am Jen, Ma'am Dimple, and Ma'am Marisa. So DJ morning. Bernie. Yes, it's now our uh, opportunity to welcome once again the couple who was here last December to share about you know actually it was like a uh, una una na mi because they shared about their love story mm. but. Uh, Today, their love story, siempre as a couple, but their love story also with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm. So today, this morning, no, we're going to have that opportunity to also listen once more to the story of, uh, well, Richard and Carmen Gabmeyer. So, willkommen and uh, wie geht's? Is it? Willkommen. <laughs> willkommen. Welcome, welcome. So, Richard and Carmen. So, how are you? Yeah. Wait, there, the yeah, microphone. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do that again. Yeah, looking forward to our time together. Ah. Excited, nervous. Kulbaan. Kulbaan. Wait, I'm going to tell you about it. I'm ashamed. So that's good. So, uh-huh. so thank you. No? And then more on that uh, later, especially about their wonderful story and their mm. testimony. Right. Can't wait. Yes. So uh, we're looking forward to hearing more about them, and uh, just like what I shared earlier on when we started the program, uh, when we go through some tough times, human as we are, even though we're Christian, of course we ask the Lord, "Bakit? Why, Lord?" But uh, the story doesn't end there. Mm. The Lord is always gracious, mm. and His new His mercies are new every morning. Amen. His right. new mercies are new every morning. Yeah, very so new. <laughs> very new, very many new, <laughs> and his grace abounds too. Amen. Wow. Amen. Program Amen. Before, huh? yeah. <laughs> Abounding grace. <laughs> there was special mention. No. <laughs> and also, uh, boundless harmony is found in the Lord. Uh, Amen. Did yeah. you miss it? Uh, yeah, super. And today's Friday, the so it reminds me a lot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what you're you're now a morning person. Yeah. Before you were a night person, mm-hmm. so you're walk walk before. God is constantly changing. <laughs> mm, amen. <laughs> amen. So you're, amen. You're, you're welcome to the light. Right. That's what I mentioned last week. Mm. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right, so friends, uh, let's look forward to the stories that our special guests Richard and Carmen Gapmeyer will be sharing later on. Mm. And in the meantime, let's listen to this uplifting song, reminding us that yes, we may. Ex- experience a lot of uh, challenges in our lives but 
we can always look forward to the joy that we have in the Lord. And we can choose to trade our sorrows. Amen. 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 Here's Daryl Evans with the song entitled, I'm Trading My Sorrows. Only here on Mango. Mornings. Right here on Mango Man- Radio. Radio. <laughs> we continue to communicate, communicate the, the love, love of God. God.
dreamt of becoming a pilot and have your office in the sky? Earn your pilot license in no time at Adventure Flight. Try out our Redbird Flight Simulator absolutely free and be swept away by your imagination. Adventure Flight is located at Mactan Cebu International Airport and Davao City International Airport. Contact us at telephone number 082-297-3255 or in our Globe Mobile number 0926-091-3289. You may also visit ISAT Davao Facebook page. Make every day an adventure. Free simulator located in Cebu is subject to schedule and availability. Call now. Kairos Kitchen, celebrating life's special moments. Serving Asian and seafood cuisine with an alfresco garden restaurant with 80-person seating capacity and an air-conditioned VIP room that can accommodate up to 35 persons. Also accepting off-site catering, Kairos Kitchen is located at Inigo Street, Abrera, Davao City. Open every day from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. except Sundays. For queries, call 0922-800-3005 or check out Kairos Kitchen on Facebook. Celebrating life's special moments at Kairos Kitchen. Hi, I am Don Don Landeta, a facilities manager of a telecommunications company based in Davao City. I am in my mid-50s. I easily get tired at work and at home doing family tasks. One time, my wife told me to try EXL Makabuhay Plus. Since then, whenever I get ill, sick, or stressed, or tired, I take two capsules of EXL Makabuhay Plus. And honestly, I got relieved. I recommend EXL Makabuhay Plus. It's time to invest for your health now. Ang EXL Makabuhay Plus, mapalit sa mga butika sa inyong lugar. Quality coating ba ang hanap mo? Give your car the makeover it deserves with MassPro. MassPro's nano ceramic coating implies the cutting edge nano technology hailed from Japan. Experience for yourself why people are gushing over the extra gloss, extra shine, and scratch-resistant surface achieved only through MassPro's Nano Ceramic Coating. Hit us up at 0908-524-7777 or drop us a message on our Facebook page, MaskPro Davao. We're located at Sobricari Street, Obrero, Davao City. Make it different with MaskPro, the number one trusted nano ceramic coating. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. Proverbs 3.5 Ang mabuting balita ay hatid sa inyo ng MX3. Mag-MX3 araw-araw para M-Extraordinary. Your story, my story. The story of Christ on Mango Mornings. Friends, welcome back to Mango Mornings, the Friday edition here in Mango Radio. Once again, we're simultaneously broadcasting live on 102.7 FM in Davao City and 91.5 FM in Zamboanga City. And of course, in our YouTube account, that's at Mango Radio Philippines. Once again, this is DJ Michelle and together with the rest of the DJs. And uh, today we are joined by... Um, Richard and Carmen Gapmeyer. And friends, check your time. It's already 7.19 in the morning. And uh, I know many of us really look forward to hear uh, the story of Richard and Carmen Gapmeyer. Kanina po, napakinggan natin yung mga boses nila. But today, um, we are so excited and thrilled, no? Very expectant mm-hmm. to really hear their remarkable story yes. and i know kayo din no you're looking forward to hear more of their story mm-hmm. and as to um how god you know um weave this wonderful story sa buhay nila Ayan po. so okay so could you share uh, your remarkable story with us um Richard? sure yeah well where do i begin we had a bit of our personal story and how we got to know the Lord and all that last time Mm -hmm. so maybe we should uh, probably continue um, with our story when we arrived in the Philippines Mm. you know because we were training with our organization 
uh, to be missionaries. God has very clearly um, directed us that way. And uh, so, funny enough, we were, I don't know if I shared that last time, but we were very opposite. Mm. Yeah, you shared. Did you share that? Yeah. Okay. And it was just amazing how the Lord really, because Carmen didn't want to go, want to be a missionary. And the Lord really, through the course of a year, totally changed her heart mm. through God's word, through exposure, obviously, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But long story short, um, we went through the training with our organization and then in January, actually it's 18 years yesterday wow. ago wow. that we arri yes. arrived in oh, wow. Budwan City. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, and we started our journey, you know, not knowing what to expect, just kind of saying, okay, Lord, here we are. We had our dreams and visions and ideas, mm -hmm. what we wanted to do. We want, wanted to be tribal missionaries, mm -hmm. wanted to go to one of the pe minority people groups in the Philippines mm -hmm. to share the gospel, right? And do church planting. Mm -hmm. That was our heart. Mm -hmm. So we began our journey um, learning Bisaya in a, a little Bisaya school there in, in Butuan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, again, um, so after a while, as we were continuing our journey um, we were beginning to do um, survey trips like visitation yeah. we would visit some of the remote groups and um, we would spend a lot of time like we w I would be gone for a week somewhere mm -hmm. in, 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 in the northeast and you know hiking through the jungle and <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, trying to f uh, um, connect with certain uh, groups mm -hmm. and um, so just looking to the Lord for direction mm. right where do you want us to serve mm. right and and and, uh, and all that and then um, at one particular occasion um, I was very much made aware of who is in control of our lives mm. Mm. I guess that was God's initial sort of um, not hint, but initial sort of sort of punch he <laughs> oh. <laughs> almost mm -hmm. gave oh. me to say, I am in control of your life, mm -hmm. whatever direction it might take. Mm -hmm. And the story goes as follows. I cut it short. Uh, so we were there way up in the in the jungle in, in uh, um, Surigao, mm -hmm. somewhere. And um, so we were in this little village. Um, and then all of a sudden there were two men running out you know, from the bush somewhere. One had a, a big gun in his hand mm -hmm. and the other guy was chasing him. Oh. So they were wrestling about this gun and then and then all this commotion going on and obviously in the host language that we did not understand. Mm -hmm. And we had a guide though. Mm -hmm. And then all this commotion and everything and then one guy took the gun and they fired a shot in the air and then uh, more commotion and, and we're like, what in the world is going on? And then this other guy was throwing a, a can of bullets at us you know he was throwing it at us and praise God no one got hit so we went inside the little house that we visited and then somehow all the commotion kind of stopped and then and, and it you know and then we didn't know what's happening we're like well maybe we should go maybe we shouldn't stay so we talked to the locals there and all of a sudden an hour later a guy came he had no idea who he was mm -hmm. and apparently in the language again we don't didn't understand um, he apologized oh. to us. Mm -hmm. so like, wow, that's <laughs> for one thing very unusual in yeah. our estimation. And then what is going on? So we stayed the night anyway, and uh, it was all good. And on the way home, the guide, t the, uh, the, the, gar uh, the guide mm -hmm. uh, told us what happened because he spoke the language and he understood and, and inquired what was going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of those guys, he had a an argument with his family and he set out to shoot one of us with his gun mm. and he was already oh. shooting uh, but the gun didn't go off mm. oh, oh. and uh, that's why with all this commotion they fired the second shot to see if the gun is working and mm -hmm. it worked yeah so we're like ah, so they, put, pointed it they pointed at the air just to see if it works mm. right and, it, and then the shot fired but the first shot directed at any one of us missionaries oh. we were three guys um, didn't go off mm. so we were like wow thank you Lord <laughs> you know you are indeed in control, yeah. in control. control. and we had no idea that that was what happened right mm -hmm. 
And I used that to say, and you know, it totally God's thing, but I used that to say because during that time we were about three years or two and a half years in the country, or two years, I guess, right? And then God began to slowly take our lives apart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it began with a severe sickness on Carmen's mm. part, and I don't know if you can. Sure. If yes, you want to continue to share a little bit about that, or. Yes. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yes. Okay, okay. Just with that amoeba thing. Um, what he just said, you know, it's really true because. But I have to start a little bit, a little bit before that. When we were to our first conference, it's the mission conference, an annual conference in Manila. Mm -hmm. And I remember this was our very first conference. And the leader then at that time, he shared something like a sermon or something. And he left us with one sentence. And the sentence was like, just imagine if you don't have anything or anyone close to your heart anymore, mm -hmm. would Christ be enough? You know, mm. and then he left us with that, you know, and uh, to be very honest, I had to be very honest to myself and think like, hmm, mm. okay, <laughs> nobody <laughs> looking at me. That's well, I felt like, question. yeah, then I mm. felt like to be very, very, very honest to myself, not talking to anyone else, but to myself, I have to admit there are certain things in my life which I thought I need or I, I really do need that for my life, you mm. know, mm. this and him or her or whatever it is, you know. But then this conference was over, over and this sentence just followed me. And this is kind of, to make a long story short, <laughs> this is kind of the way it was, you know. Mm. I thought I need so many things. And God started working from that time on, taking one thing after another, one thing which I thought is important for my life, mm -hmm. took it away. And it was a very, very painful process. Because we started out, like Richard said, you know, we came to the Philippines, we left everything behind, mm -hmm. you know. We wanted to be missionaries because this was on our heart. This yeah. is what God put on, put on our heart to be yeah. missionaries. Mm. So we were all on fire when we came, <laughs> mm. wanting to reach people in a tribe somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. And God's story was a totally different one, mm. what we were yeah. not expecting. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That's yeah. no, that's very good. And then it began with Carmen getting really sick. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah, with uh, some amoeba and she oh. was... Ah. I guess again, long story short, uh, treated in a way that wasn't really helpful, I guess, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> mm. to point it, to say it at least. And uh, so she was sick for over a year. Mm. Like she could not, One like times you couldn't really get out of oh, bed. Oh. And uh, we tried to do our surveys that I was talking about, right? Mm. Mm. We tried to do our thing and, and I'm like, and then. And we had a baby and two small boys at that time. Yeah. Mm. While you yeah. were sick. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. In, in yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was sick for one and a half year to the oh, point then years. really, really that I just couldn't handle this life anymore. Mm -hmm. And then um, Richard was always set on going to the tribe. Yeah. I mean, we, we all did kind of, you know, because they mm -hmm. did all the surveys and stuff, you know, and mm -hmm. ready. And we wanted to go to the Manobos. And yeah, that was our heart, you know. Well, then our leadership said, sorry, you can't go like this, you know, you have to go home and get calm and treat it again. Mm. And if Lord wants to, you can come back, you know. Yeah. And that's maybe where, along with what you were saying, you know, if Christ is enough and, and mm -hmm. other things we need in life. That's where God showed me, you know, you are being led by your own blind ambition. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. God had to show me, like, for me, a world was falling apart. Yeah. You know, can you imagine leadership telling you, you're not going to go into the tribe. Mm. It's just not going to happen. And obviously, obviously, they were wise in saying that because it wasn't. And it, looking back, it shouldn't. It, it was mm. the right mm. thing. But mm. I was so blinded by my own ambition and uh, desire to do the, you know, to serve the Lord. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, that I wasn't open for it. And it took the leadership to straight out tell me it's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that was very painful for me. There was one, you know, like, because again, um, it had to, the Lord had to show me, this is what you want, you know, but maybe I have a different plan, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we went home to Germany, right? And um, come and praise God. Um, again, just looking at, God's direction. He's put us in touch with a doctor who was a missionary doctor, right? And he knew exactly what her problem oh. was and he mm -hmm. treated her That's rightly. Good. 
and uh, her whole inner system got sort of restored oh. apart from gluten intolerance okay. mm. which is a a hassle but a minor hassle as compared to having almost developed an autoimmune mm -hmm. uh, sickness. sickness from that so it was prevented somewhat before it got like worse yes the doctor just out. sort of just in time I guess mm. Mm. caught it knew what to do knew the right things to take and courses of action to take mm. to yeah. help I find it heartbreaking that you had this dream mm. and it was your goal and you had your heart set on it and it's a good dream mm -hmm. with good intentions mm. through and through mm. but suddenly <laughs> God reroutes you mm -hmm. yes and yeah. I also wonder, like, how did you as a couple um, were able to deal with it? Like, when God showed you that He has a different plan, I wonder how did you deal with the emotions? The was it a discouragement yes. even? And how wow. did you two deal yeah. with it as a couple? Um, yeah, honestly, um, at that time, I don't think I dealt very well mm -hmm. with it, and I was really, really like disappointed. Mm -hmm frustrated, mm -hmm. even angry at leadership, mm. you know, and all those were signs that later on showed me, you know, you reacted like that because you wanted to set up your own glory. Mm. Mm. You were not really interested in the glory of God. You wanted to set up your own glory. And if that gets taken away, you go mad, mm. you know, mm. because you think this is what I need to be someone in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and if that mm -hmm. gets robbed, you react in anger, bitterness, mm -hmm. and all those kind of things. So, mm -hmm. for Carmen, was it the same for you? What was going through your mind as you guys faced this situation? Yeah, pretty hard actually, because I also thought we are going to the Manobos. I really wanted to go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. but yeah didn't happen and especially seeing him like being so frustrated and so mm. was very difficult but mm. yeah <laughs> God brought us through that too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then you know God continued he it's always amazing how God somehow sort of brings you around shows you your, those areas mm. where we're like okay look this is what's going on in your own heart right and he continued the journey with us nonetheless <laughs> you mm -hmm. know because it's amazing he's just not giving up on us mm. right. you know and uh, so we came back to the Philippines in 2008 mm. um, we moved to central uh, Mindanao mm -hmm. somewhere mm. in Bukit Noon and uh, so I was put in charge of developing sort of a cultural language learning program mm. Mm -hmm. and uh, again I'm like God what are you doing here you know, the field was sort of going through our through a bit of a rough time and we did not have the prospect of many new co-workers arriving. Oh. I'm like, I'm developing this program for whom? No yeah. one is coming. Mm. It seems like you're alone. Yeah, yeah. very and much alone. Where this, are you? Yeah. God? Where are you? You know, yeah. At this time it was very difficult in the in our mission organization because eight units were leaving actually. Yeah, yeah, so mm -hmm. eight units, like families, friends oh and goodness. stuff. So we were pretty alone then anymore and the leadership had troubles and problems. So everything was a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we thought, why are we even here? You know, it was like a sinking ship and we were kind of one of the last people why being boring. there. It yeah. felt like it, you know. And also before yeah. we had other people, friends from the say. mission left and stuff. So we were feeling very lonely at this point, oh. at mm -hmm. least me. Yeah. <laughs> there was our perception of it. You know, oh. we felt things going down the drain. There yeah. were not actually. There mm -hmm. was just in our frustration and perception of things. Mm. We were like, oh man, this is mm. a drinking ship, let's go. Mm. And God actually had a way out for us, but again, very other very different than mm. we intended. Mm -hmm. And it was through our son Elias. Mm. He was six oh. years. Can I, can I just say something sure. here in between? Yeah. Okay, the thing something. is, maybe it needs to be a little bit more explained, you know? Like, oh, the yes. thing is what God is taking yes. things away, you know, which is on yeah. our heart. So, just to wrap up here a little bit, for me as a woman, I'm very emotional, I'm very feeling person. Mm -hmm. And for me... We can relate. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for me, um, leaving Germany is already a big step. It was for me a big step. So mm. I felt like, because I always lived there with my family, friends, church, I was like 
grow up there. Home. So yeah. just leaving this behind was really, really hard for me. Mm -hmm. But then knowing that this is what God has for me, coming here, we're full of expectations and like, whoa, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then God took one thing after another. Like, I thought, like, oh, as long as I have white missionaries around me, they are kind of something, you know, <laughs> I'm familiar white, yes, you know. Yes, but they yes. were really, to be honest, I had some disappointing experience with mm -hmm. this, and I was really disappointed for, like, what, you know, like, I thought they are my friends, you know, yeah. in my way of thinking they are <laughs> my friends. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was different. Yeah. So I felt like, okay, as long as, I always thought, as long as, okay, as long as, There's because, something. yeah, yeah. He was then so frustrated with mm. the plane change changes and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. I felt like, okay, I can Guyana go. <laughs> I thought, I, as long as I'm still healthy, I can do it, you know. Then I got so, so sick and oh. really horrible sick for this one and a half year. But then God brought us back. So I felt like, whoa, great, you know. <laughs> but then came the troubles in a mission and Richard, again, being very down and frustrated because mm -hmm. he is the language and culture coordinator now yeah. and everyone is leaving kind of because mm -hmm. of troubles and stuff so I felt like wow okay but as long as I have my kids as long mm -hmm. as my kids are mm -hmm. healthy you know I can Kayanako you know because mm -hmm. this is more my focus now my, my children and then the big thing happened then my son our son got really 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 sick from now to now I like I totally unexpected mm -hmm. we were Elias Elias mm -hmm. oh. yeah, yeah. So we were walking somewhere and all of a sudden he walked like a drunk guy. And I'm like, Elias, what's wrong with you, you know? And then he said, Mama, my legs are not obeying me, you know? Mm. He was six years old. He was six years time. old oh. at that time. And I'm like, what? And the thing was, you know, before, a few months before, we were in Manila. Mm -hmm. And so in Mega Mall, there is a playground, indoor playground. Ah, yes. mm. And every time we were there, I said to my kids, let's go and play because where we live, there's nothing like this, okay? <laughs> so I said, go and enjoy yourself. Go to the playground. And of course, my oldest and my, the next one, Melissa, they wanted to go play like crazy. And Elias said, no, mama, I want to stay with you. And I'm like, Elias, no, you go play. You know, this is your opportunity. Yeah. Go play. Mm -hmm. And he, no, mama, I stay with you. I said, like, why? You know, that's weird. And all of a sudden, I had this weird feeling. Just let him be because you don't have him much longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is this for a thought, you know? I'm like, yeah. it really cut my heart as a mama. And I thought like, no, no, such a weird thought, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I just really pushed it away. So I said, of course, Elias, if you want to stay with me, then just hang around and walk with me through the mall. How exciting, you know? Mm -hmm. But little did I know, when I told you this happened with his legs, yeah. we went to the next city, Cagayan de Oro, <laughs> and went to this only neurologist for uh, for kids and we did this checking out for him and stuff and I thought he did pretty well mm -hmm. and then she just looked at me you know and I will always remember her face looking at me and saying I'm very sorry and I didn't need to hear anything else mm -hmm. anymore I thought mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but she said your son has a very big brain tumor mm -hmm. like a size of an egg of a chicken <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. and it's on a very dangerous place and mm. some people can have operations, surgeries and some mm. will die. Ah. So she told me and I'm like, great, thank you very much. You know, <laughs> And I remember I just was running out of this room and I was sitting in Cagayan in this hospital just there because Richard stayed with him and stuff. So I just be by myself sitting on the floor. There was this window on the left. I looked outside. I saw the ocean in the distance and I said like, God, why is that? You know, like and mm. crying like crazy. Because I was so scared. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, I need my family. I need my family. That was yeah. my first, my mm. mama, you know. <laughs> so, and I actually called and I said, Mama, I need you. <laughs> mm. Come on over if you want to see your grandchild alive. Mm. 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 But nobody came. Oh. Mm. And, and it was like, I said to God, God, I need my family. And then I had this thought in my mind saying, let me be your family. Mm. Yeah. So things went very quickly very from quick. then, you know, that he, we had a bit of a, uh, we had to go to Cebu to do some surgery, which oh. was very mm. um, insufficient, obviously, because oh. a lot of it was still inside. Yeah. So mm. we decided, no, we have to go home mm. to um, uh, Europe. So we went to Austria mm. and, uh, and we, we, yeah, basically went home and then, uh, took care of it there but it was a really 
a very trying time just to in, even in Cebu we were mm -hmm. there for three weeks and mm -hmm. uh, it was it's just very difficult mm -hmm. to not knowing what happened there were misdiagnoses mm -hmm. as to what kind of tumor it was uh, there were conflicting so did, they did not cooperate with the one in Cagayan de Oro? I don't know what oh. see we don't know any of yeah. those structures you know it was mm -hmm. just a <laughs> quite a quite a uh, apart from the situation itself very trying just to mm. find out now has there been enough taken out or not but mm -hmm. so, so all those kind of things in addition to the mm -hmm. um, mm. trauma there and uh, yeah you can mm. add something there's of course more to that story oh yeah all <laughs> the so he was yeah. not able he developed he hydrocephalus already you know oh. so mm. he needed a shunt so At they put a age. shunt mm -hmm. yeah At they six years yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they put a shunt in his brain to you know get all get rid of this extra fluid in his yeah. brain so because he was not able to fly anymore but it was such a pressing thing pressing thing that we had not much time so we mm. had to fly because taking the box that a big boat you know would take three days so yeah. it was too long mm -hmm. so that's why they put the shunt in and so our mission pilot was flying in an altitude where Elias could handle that all pressure and stuff mm -hmm. flying to Cebu and then he got immediately like a surgery done and it was very interesting because we had no idea being in a situation like this being a foreigner you know and feeling really lonely in this but there was God put this missionary couple on our sides Canadian mm -hmm. the mission pilot and his wife and two sons mm. so she was my brain in that time because I couldn't think straight you know oh. so she organized accommodation for us she was talking with back and forth and making sure because I'm gluten free and I need to care for myself and I need to care for my son mm. so in that time it was amazing how God took care even of little things mm -hmm. like people were sending me packages with gluten-free food <laughs> mm. yeah. then people all of a sudden showed up to take okay. care of my kids mm -hmm. you know yeah. Lucas and Melissa mm. and and one was there happened to be in Cebu which lived in Butuan before yeah. and her sister was my best friend mm. so my kids were very very you know they loved my best friend yeah. because mm. we were really good friends so her sister came all of a sudden to the hospital and she looked like the same like my friend you mm. know, she really looked the same even the voice is the oh. same and so my kids immediately went to her oh. to, took yeah, by the hand you know they went to the zoo and swimming pools and everything mm -hmm. so I'm like oh praise God and I didn't even think about who is this lady you know because <laughs> she looked like her sister so I trusted <laughs> her completely mm -hmm. and then there's so many things happened in this time when I could see, really see clearly God's f guidance in this, you know, like he putting people on our side. And we also had a friend with us from Germany who was a teacher for, our, for Lucas and Elias at that time, mm -hmm. who stayed with us for half a year, something like this, right? Yeah, so she was me a really help for me emotionally too, you know. And then it was one night I woke up and I was so scared. And then I just took my little Bible and I opened up and it was like... <laughs> And I just read this verse, and I remember this in German, of course. <laughs> but in English, it's like this: mm. Don't be afraid, because nothing hap nothing bad will happen, or something like this. And mm. I'm like, what? You know, can I take this to my heart? Can I take this for him and stuff? But I don't know. So while we had to go through the surgery and stuff, one of the surgeons, he was more than 70 years old, and he couldn't hardly listen hear anything mm. so he had this old hearing thing and he all, what did you say and we're like da, 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 da. what did you say <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness and then the other one was a believer and he was like an angel so the two of them did the surgery Aww. and they said it's very difficult and dangerous because the place where it was and they said but we will do our best mm. Mm. Yeah. and two people from leadership came to be with us at this time and I remember they did the surgery we didn't hear anything and then we were in a hospital and this guy from the leadership and I, we happened to open the elevator and on the other side, it opened at the same time. Mm. Mm. So we stepped in the elevator and at that time the door opened and a bunch of doctors and nurses there and in the midst my son laying on this bed mm. <laughs> mm. and he looked like that and I would never forget this face and this no hair and nothing and he looked like you know and I'm like yeah. oh, this is my son and one doctor said is this your son and I said yes it is you know I couldn't handle this mm. sight and, and praise God Richard was there and he said I take over you you just how are you so and I just <laughs> left then I took this the one from the leadership and I we were running down the stairways getting a taxi getting out of this hospital I needed to go somewhere else you know 
but this was really, really hard and because we came back. And then his whole right side was destroyed oh. because they came oh. too close to his nerves. Ah. So his whole right side, he couldn't walk, he couldn't use his arms, his legs, nothing anymore. You know. And the doctors told us, oh, we removed almost everything which was visible under the microscope. Ah. Mm. So we believed him. But then I will never forget these times where we were holding Elias again, holding him up. You know, when you are a mama, you know how it is when babies are learning to, to walk. walk. Yes. Mm. And now he's six years old and he had to relearn everything again. He was just, oops, falling <laughs> and stuff. We had to carry him up the stairs and down and everything. And then he got very niwang naka ayo, you know. Mm. So uh, lots of things. But in all of it, I could say God was really sustaining us. He mm. was the one, yeah. the substitute family and stuff. And then he was on the ICU. And then I could see him like raising up from <laughs> the death <laughs> mm. again. You know, like he survived that thing. And wow. it was really amazing. Mm. How was uh, Elias when, uh, you know, how did he react to this? You know, how, how did he take it? Mm. Did he question, you know? No. Mama, why is this happening to me? No, actually he did not. He was very calm. He's, he's more a calm boy and I'm very thankful for this, but he is mm. also very emotional. So he was crying a lot, I remember, crying uh -huh. a lot. He was also dizzy, he didn't know what's going on with him and stuff. But his siblings were a big help, I think. Mm -hmm. Lucas and also Lizzie at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, Elias is how old? He's 18, 19, 19 now. 19, oh, yeah. so it's been 13 years. Yeah, yeah, but mm -hmm. then, yeah. 13 years, yeah. Oh. So, well, the story continues, like, God sent us people in a way. We had no idea who they are. They all of a sudden showed up in the hospital room. Are you Carmen and Richard? I said, yes, who are you? Like, uh, uh. I'm from a church here and there. We, I heard from your story. I just want to give you oh. money or bring us food or something. Mm. They just came and disappeared. So God just put all kinds of surprises in it. It wow. was amazing. We just couldn't figure this out. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. And then Elias learned how to stand up again, learned how to walk, did baby steps and stuff. But he was sitting in a wheelchair for now. So the doctors told us, we highly recommend you going back, you know, because, you know, have a follow-up checkup and yes. back home because it's more advanced in medicine and stuff. So we did. Mm. Oh, before we did, we went back to this village where we lived at that time. And we had Bible studies with kids oh. every Wednesday. Mm. So when we came back, finally, they were running, saying, like, when can we continue with the Bible study? Mm. And we had one last lesson left about Jesus being the Lamb mm. of God. And I, on my heart was really, I want to teach this. I want to finish this, you know. Mm -hmm. But we were so busy because everything had to be very fast to pack mm -hmm. up our house and mm -hmm. pack up everything and then leave mm -hmm. and go back to Germany. But there were all of a sudden a little time. And I said, okay, we do it very spontaneous. So people came in running to the house, kids. And I was able to finish this Bible lessons about, you know, chronological teaching yeah. for kids. It's mm -hmm. just 10 lessons. But anyway, so I was able to continue and to finish this. And they were all listening. And the biggest testimony was... That Elias sitting in a wheelchair, all of a sudden he stood up and he is the living proof that there is a God who mm. takes care. Amen. And this was, I think, something for everyone who was in this Bible study. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, then we went home to Germany. And maybe you can continue. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah? sure. Oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll pause because I'm crying now. <laughs> 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 Quietly in my corner. But uh, we'll pause for a quick break. Um, let's listen to this song uh, suggested by Michelle uh, a while ago. He Will Hold Me Fast mm -hmm. by Keith and Christine Getty along with Sela. Friends, you're still tuning in to Mango Mornings with our very special guests uh, Richard and Carmen Gapmeyer mm. and these are your hosts with me Michelle Michelle Pastor JB and Bernie and this is Aya friends uh, let us praise the Lord with this song up next he will hold me fast once again that's Keith and Christine Getty with Sela. Amen. 
must hold me fast Kaya, Lord, pagod na pagod na po ako. Paano ko ba masasolusyon ng mga problema ito? Minsan, kailangan mo lang iiyak sa Panginoong yung daladala mo para makapag-isip ka ng tama at magkaroon ng pusong payapa. Huwi ka pa sa Matthew 11 verses 28 to 29. Come to me, All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Anak, ang tunay na peace of mind at heart kasi ay makukuha lamang sa pagpapahinga sa presensya ng Diyos. These are words of encouragement mula po sa Usapong Discipleship at Mango Radio Communicating the Love of God. A 
Amazing Grace on Mango Mornings here on Mango Radio. Wondering where to buy desktop PCs and laptops with superb quality that suits your budget? Choose PC Gate, the most advanced yet affordable computer store in Mindanao. All your computer needs are available here. So visit the nearest PC Gate. We have branches at the third floor of Gaisano Mall in both Davao and Tagum cities, and at door 11 El Manuel Citywalk Shopping Mall in Cotabato City. PC Gate head office is located at door 1B STL Building, Luxon Street, Obrero, Davao City. For more information, contact 082 305 4911 or 0929 419 1008. Now accepting major credit cards and home credit. You may also visit our Facebook page at PCGate Technologies Incorporated. PCGate. Say goodbye to heat and glare on your car with Mask Pro. Mask Pro Nano Ceramic Tint isn't just any other tint. Not only does it reject heat and block the sun's glare without compromising vision, it also provides your car added protection by making your windows and windshield shatterproof. So give your car the best care and protection with Mask Pro. For more information, send us a message on our Facebook page, Mask Pro Ceramic Tint, or call us at 0908-524-7777. Make it different with Mask Pro Ceramic Tint. If comfort, eco-friendly, Affordable and in the heart of the city tops your list, then booking your stay in Midori Inn should be your next move. For bookings and further inquiries, feel free to call us at 300-0101 or 0932-864-3674. That's 0932-8-MIDORI. Visit us at Camus Extension, Davao City. Midori Inn, your home away from home with a touch of nature. God's mercies are new every morning. And check your time, friends. It's already 7.57 in the morning. You're still listening to... Uh, good mornings. You're on Mango, Mango Radio. Radio. We are communicating, communicating the, the love, love of God. God. Well, even though it's before eight, but uh, we're supposed to have energy. But you know, the the topic is so serious. Yeah, it's so deep. <laughs> and, it's so uh, beautiful. We still have, of course, uh, Carmen and Richard Gapmeyer, and mm. uh, they're sharing with us uh, what happened uh, to their son, okay, whom they thought that would really be 100 percent, you know, healthy, but turns out that he had this tumor on his uh, on his brain and uh, definitely no um, it affected the family a lot because then as missionaries you know you're not supposed to experience this right like you know, good good lang pero uh, the question that Carmen also posed is why why us why me why my child and uh, definitely, all parents are experiencing that, no? That uh, when they have uh, one of their kids, you know, experience this, that's the biggest question. You sometimes can, you know, compress that into one letter, why? And it's a big question mark. And already, you're seeing that, you know, um, Elias was uh, uh, getting better. And uh, definitely, you are also being provided for by all, all, all your needs you know like people coming over and definitely helping you out so um to not shorten but to also uh, uh get there because then i know that uh, elias really did get better and um when it when it happened you know uh how did it happen <laughs> by the way so carmen okay so we had to go back of course you know <clears throat> Um, to Germany mm. and visit, we 
checked him out there at a doctor in the hospital and he said like oh no it's too dangerous he didn't want to do it then we finally went to Vienna Austria where also our church is mm. and so there's a specialist a really famous brain surgeon mm -hmm. and he said okay I will do it but mm. it's very highly risky mm. so the thing was I was pretty pregnant with Becky my youngest ah. so that was another thing <laughs> mm -hmm. so and he told Richard that is very serious thing and condition and he doesn't know if he will survive this or not but Richard didn't tell me thankfully about this uh -huh. so the time came when his surgery was scheduled and that was three weeks before my due date with my daughter uh -huh. so Richard went with Elias to the hospital to have surgery next morning and the same night my water broke all of a sudden <laughs> mm. and I had to be rushed in the hospital to have a baby at that night <laughs> while Richard and Elias were in the other hospital mm. facing surgery brain surgery very mm. dangerous so um, I was waiting my mom thankfully was there at this moment to helping us with Elias she was thinking you know but then things came different again so I was in a hospital I called Richard and I said like in the morning uh, you know where I am I'm just having about uh, having a baby and you're like what <laughs> so <laughs> the the surgery got rescheduled because of this you know because having a baby and at the same time a very dangerous surgery is not a good mixture mm -hmm. so they said okay we postponed the surgery so Elias had another grace period of six weeks actually until mm. he was finally due again so then something else happened in between but we just skipped that so <laughs> and then he had the surgery which started eight o'clock in the morning and lasted till eight o'clock at night 12 hours. and we didn't hear a thing during the whole time oh but we had amazing peace which surpasses so all understanding which i only can testify because i've been there people say sometimes you know you're in the midst of somewhere and you have the peace and I can really say it's really true mm. because it's totally not understandable <laughs> when your son is undergoing such a very dangerous thing and the doctor said who knows and then there is peace and you're just waiting you know God just carried us through so then there was this time when they actually called us he's done and we're like ah, how is he doing did he survive and so yeah, yeah 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 so we went straight to the hospital and we saw him sitting in bed hi mama and I'm like what you know <laughs> he still he's has like his nothing. hair and stuff this huge difference I have to tell respect and very thankful for the doctors there ah. and he was sitting hey and then he could eat already something gemai, you know and I'm like what you know like this is unbelievable you know the change the huge ah. difference mm. and the doctor said yeah it went well but we still couldn't remove everything because oh. it's too dangerous oh. so mm. there are still 30% 30 percent mm. left in his brain oh. brain the stem on the brain stem mm. oh. well we need to you know just let him down let him settle for a while and then we have to check him you know and see what we will do so they were they were thinking about radiation mm. chemotherapy or just doing nothing for the mm. now and we said please don't do anything right now <laughs> you know we just want to have a little break from all this mm -mm. because the main thing was gone anyway now yeah so then church elders from our church came home and were praying for Elias and I remember this this boy sitting in the middle and the church elders touched his head and were praying for him mm. it was really special but then because we stayed so long so we moved back to Germany yeah yeah, jetzt kannst du. <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway so the whole uh, the whole to cut this a little short because we want to get to other things, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so many more stories. Right. We yeah. th no, the Lord really just challenged us to go back to the Philippines because mm. we were like, no, we're not going to go back anymore because oh. of this, mm. right? Because we're like, no, this is just not going to happen and it was too complicated. So finally, the Lord through again, it's, we could spend another hour talking about this, you know, mm -hmm. um, but the Lord challenged us to go back to the Philippines individually and uh, no, and, and just just wait a second <laughs> and he'll just uh, <laughs> showed us that he will we have time yeah that he wants us <laughs> to do that you know mm. in different ways I was actually in the Philippines packing everything up and closing the door mm. because we had just left our house and everything like in a rush mm. so I'm like okay packing up going home and I held this impression that oh, why, am I do why am I doing this you know I like I don't know if <laughs> this is really mm. the end uh, anyway, 
um, so we ended up back in the Philippines Stop. in no. 2013. Now here. And, uh, oh, no, 2012 actually. I really... And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, go, wanted go. to take it away. No, no. this is the m <laughs> such an important thing. I really need to interrupt. I'm very sorry. <laughs> but the thing was really our people from the church said, I think you should go ba back to the Philippines. And also Richard had this impression, but I didn't want to come back anymore mm -hmm. because having a brain tumor child and going through all this ordeal again and who knows what will happen. I said, no, I can't. I'm not going. Even if the church is telling me I am the one who has to stay there, not mm -hmm. the church. You mm -hmm. know? I mean, we as a family. Mm -hmm. So then came the time where I couldn't handle this pressure anymore. I always nervous my heart and stuff. And Richard was like, oh, come on, we should go. And I said, no, I'm not going, you know, I'm not crazy, you know. And then I said, okay, God, I cannot stand this anymore. So I dare, as your daughter, I dare to ask you till next Sunday, I want to know from you if this is what you want us to do. Mm. I don't dare, I don't care what other people tell me, if it is the church, if it is my husband, if it is somebody, I need to know in my heart <coughs> what God Almighty says to this. So Friday came. <laughs> And Friday, I was really, really down. I was really down in my heart and my emotions, everything. And I went down in the basement to do laundry. <laughs> and I happened to meet somebody there who I haven't seen for quite a while. She's a believer. And she said, man, Carmen, I always wanted to tell you. And so good, I see you again. She said, I don't know. I really strongly have the impression you should go back to the Philippines, right? And I was like, huh, who are you? <laughs> and then she said, like, I think maybe it is like you are standing on a traffic light and it's green, but you really think it's red. Oh, ah. like, oh interesting. I said, well, You're thank you. <laughs> thank you for telling me. I'm just doing my laundry. I went up the stairs and I <laughs> met another guy who's responsible for another mission organization. I really like him. And he came and said, like, Carmen, how are you? And I'm like, do you really want to know how I'm doing, you know? <laughs> and I looked at him and said, I, I'm, I'm not doing good. <laughs> and he said to me, could it be maybe that God is saying to you, you should go back to the Philippines and you are just a bit rebellious maybe? And I'm like, thank you very much. <laughs> well, I will think about it. And so I went upstairs folding my laundry really quickly. And, and I said to God, God, maybe you sent me these people in my way, but it's not enough for me. I want to hear from you. Mm. <laughs> there was silence. Next morning, Saturday morning, I woke up and I was in bed. And here this is, and everyone who listen now, Please listen carefully. So I woke up and I had this, my heart, <laughs> you know, running fast and stuff because the, my due date is tomorrow to know from God. Oh. So I woke up and I had this thought all of a sudden in my mind, Carmen, who's responsible for your kids? And I thought it's my thinking, you know. So I had all these answers, of course, you know. God gave us four kids, you know, and I'm responsible. I want to do all I can do for my kids. I love them to peace. I want to fight like a bear for his cups and blah, 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 blah. Ah, yeah, okay. There was silence. And then another question. Carmen, who's responsible for your kids? And all of a sudden I got goosebumps. And I felt this is a different voice. This mm. is not my mind. Mm. And I said, God, is this you speaking? And all of a sudden... There were Psalm 139, so present to me, you know, that God formed the innermost being of us. He sets the day when one will be born. He sets the day when one will be die. Mm. And everything in between, God already ordained before the very first moment of you and my life began. Mm. So all of this was so clear to me. And I said, like, God, I think, I think, I think you are responsible, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And then I was like, yes. So do you know what your problem is, Carmen? I said, no, what is my problem? <laughs> and it was like God saying, you think you are responsible. Mm. And I had to admit I did, because I wanted to fight for them as much as I can, even mm. though I cannot do anything. It's just my love, it's just so deep for them. And then I had to say, God, I know I'm so sorry. I thought I am. And then God, Carmen, that's the deal. If you give me your children, I will promise you I will take care of them. And I said, okay, God, if this is you talking to me, I will give you my children, and you promise me to take care of them, especially of my brain tumor child. Mm. And if you will, I go wherever you send me, even back in the Philippines. And he said, yes, do so. So I give him Lucas, my oldest. <laughs> I give him my boy, Elias. I gave him my Melissa and my baby, Becky. Mm. 
And God said, here you go. At this very moment, there was absolutely peace. My heart played normal again. <laughs> mm. All nervousness was gone. And instant peace and the knowing that God says, go back to the Philippines. Mm. So next morning we went to church and that was the due date. And the one who was preaching, it was exactly saying that, you know, to trust God with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding and oh. things like this. So we said like at lunchtime, we said, kids, we know now what we should do. We should go back to the Philippines. Everyone was saying, yes, no. you know, like, great. <laughs> they Everyone were celebrating. Yes, except absolutely. <laughs> except the little one. She was like, what? Oh. You know, <laughs> even Elias. <laughs> Elias, yes. He yeah, especially, oh. yeah, you know. Yeah, they, they actually loved the idea. So we came back to the Philippines. We started from scratch again because we had nothing anymore. Mm. Something came back from us before. But God just put everything in the place, everything. Wow. So time, we lived in Bukit Non then. We mm. didn't know the neighbors, nobody yet. So we time came to have Elias checked for his brain tumor again. So we went to Cagayan de Oro again, same hospital, same thing. They said like, oh, we couldn't see any change. Just come back after three months again. Three months came again and it was the time to go back to the hospital. And we did all this testing and stuff. And it was like all of a sudden the fear came up again saying like, you are so crazy. Why did you come back to the Philippines? Are you so crazy? You know, like what happens with him? You know, will you go through all this ordeal again and then moving back to Germany, all the hassle, all the saying goodbyes again, all this emotion. You, why are you doing this? Carmen, you are so crazy. Mm. And I was standing in the ocean while the rest of us was waiting for lunch because the hospital is right on the ocean and the waves are coming and coming whoosh, whoosh, yeah. with the waves coming, the fear, the doubts, yeah. and the, the just being so scared for my son. All of a sudden came this voice from heaven saying, Carmen, may I friendly remind you who's responsible for your children? Mm. And I'm like, oh, there's this voice again saying, God, you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then there was this peace again. And then after three days, they called us saying we should come to the hospital to get a result. So Richard left because I stayed, of course, with the kids. And then he called me immediately and saying, this is absolute not, that's unbelievable. There's nothing anymore. There's no wow. more tumor. Wow. It is gone and no one can explain. <laughs> it is gone as there would have never been anything there. Mm -hmm. wow. And then was the voice again. Well, didn't I tell you? May mm. I friendly remind you again who is in charge of your children? Yes. And I'm praising God for this. And we had the biggest celebration in life because he is a living God who Amen. just can do yeah. all things. There's right. nothing impossible. You know, and he is responsible for your children, whoever is listening here. You know, you are not mamas. It's God. Mm. Mm. And right. it's just so, so, so amazing. And we had the biggest celebration. We invited neighbor. We did a big celebration festival and telling the stories of Elias. Mm. And then because of this, we said then to all those Manga Silingan, we said, like, why is there so many sicknesses, so many hardships, so many troubles, so death and stuff, you know, mm. because we have the answer here in the Bible. We would love to share with you guys. Are you open for this? And because of the story, mm. they were open. So we started Bible studies. People got saved. People started their own Bible studies. So it was a huge thing coming out of this story of Elias wow. mm. until this very day today. Here, here is my son. If you would see him, he is a miracle oh. child of God oh, to yes. this very, yeah. very day. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. amazing to just all mm. glory and honor to God because Elias is amazing. He's an amazing child. He walks with God mm -hmm. and whoa, every time I see him going down when he's going diving in the ocean, you know, he's a <laughs> diver. Wow. No more hydrocephalus, nothing. He can do this. He's playing soccer right now in Manila, you know, for a mm -hmm. tournament. He's playing the drums, the guitar and everything. What every f is left is his rest left si right side is still affected. You can still see that he's shaking and stuff. Mm -hmm. But he said, Mama, you know what? That keeps me humble and mm. reminds yeah. me of the story. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's like Paul. Mm. Amazing. <laughs> and of course, I've, I've seen Elias no, on the move. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you yeah. did not know his story, okay, you will think that he's just your ordinary kid who mm. had everything okay and normal. Mm -hmm. But in fact, he had such an ordeal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, um, of course, Elia shares this story with others as well. Yes. I hope so. <laughs> if he gets a if he gets the opportunity, he does. He doesn't talk much about it though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if he's asked, you know, to share about his testimony, then he would. Mm. He would. He would yeah. for sure. Yes, yeah. for sure. Amazing. So uh, I've seen Elias play because then uh, he, he plays uh, drums and he plays the bass guitar. Mm. 
and all mm-hmm. other instruments, but I haven't heard him sing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ask him, he will. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Carmen, of course, sings and mm-hmm. plays the guitar as well. Mm, very nice. Anyway, Pastor JB, do you have uh, any question? Well, it's uh, just uh, amazing how God walks you through the path that he's trying to lead you although there will always be resistance on our part because his plans are different completely you know uh, compared to us uh, i would like to ask if uh, when did this all started the, the calling to be a missionary and how did it all you know um unfold before you as a couple and realize mm-hmm. that hey god is leading us this yeah. way and uh, um how did you like embrace it completely Without knowing yet the ordeals that you're about mm-hmm. to face, you know, mm-hmm. just to maybe add the story um, mm-hmm. and encouragement to all our listeners. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow, that's a it's probably a big question. Mm. Um, God really showed it, obviously showed it to us in in different wa- uh, ways, right? Mm. But what really was um, sticking out to me was that when I became a believer. I moved from Austria to Germany mm. and I saw just a very vibrant church mm. and very vibrant ministries all over the place for all different uh, social groups, if mm. you will, right? So there was lots of Christian activity mm. going mm. on. Obviously, there's always people in need of the gospel. And that made me uh, made me wonder, uh, maybe we there's other places that we could go where... Um, we could be more needed or could, yeah. you know, help out a bit more, right? Mm. Than in Germany where there's so many, and I was youth leader at that time in our youth group and, and if I was, would have been gone, I thought there's quite a few people behind me that could fill my place, right? Right. Mm. So that got us thinking in that direction and uh, through the course of several years, more and more, we were just ponder- pondering this idea mm. and until we found uh, a leaflet of our of that organization we are with now okay mm. and it just mm. hel- told us about many people groups mm. that because of the language barrier a cultural barrier mm. don't have such a an easy access to the gospel some have no mm. access oh. at all some mm. very mm. not easy access mm. right, right. Yeah. so it made us made me think okay we should go in this direction and mm. then maybe help out to solve that problem a bit more mm. <laughs> or be part in that kind of work Right. So, yeah, and that common uh, different, she was not um, very um, interested in that because <laughs> it sounded scary. It sounded very yeah. uh, out there. Like I don't know what it what is. It seems very this? complex. Like very complex. Mm. Yes. I remember in the Big last project. program mm. that we had that uh, you said that you're like polar opposites. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So you're the yeah. guy who wants to go, and she's yeah. the woman who, who doesn't want to this. go, yeah. and ask the question, why do we have to go? Right. Yeah. Mm. But now, do you yeah. think that uh, you already already in agreement? Uh, oh. After 18 years, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just joking. Oh. It, and uh, so it was like this, um, that we were just praying. Mm. You know, like, okay, well, I was praying, God, it, you know, if you want this, you have to change your heart. Because um. it's just not going to happen otherwise. Mm. And she was praying for, uh, to God to change my heart, to stay. And we always wow. joke about it and say, God answered my prayer, not oh. hers, because he changed her heart. Yeah. <laughs> right? And through the course of some time, obviously... He showed her through Bible, through the Bible, through missions conferences that we went to. That uh, this is actually, and uh, we did uh, like a sort of an exposure trip mm. to West Africa, uh, oh, where wow. he showed us, yes, this is the direction he wants us to go. Mm-hmm. So we did, and we went through training, and again through many many circumstances and hearing from the different countries what's happening. We felt the Lord leading us to the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting because. Mm. Uh, you are not only considering yourself to become a missionary this time. I mean, mm. if it's for the case, your case, you're mm. sure about God's calling, but mm. you have a partner to consider. Mm. Mm. And uh, you must be in accordance you know, yes. uh, with Absolutely. the decision and all that. So yeah. how did it go for you, <laughs> Carmen? Oh, I had how to go you? through hardships again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to be in hospital for two weeks with a heart inflammation thing. Like, oof. Mm. That was the first thing I thought I'm going to die then, mm. 21. Mm. And I thought, this is my end. But it wasn't. Mm. And it was just that God showed me off a very clear way 
that His grace is sufficient mm-hmm. Amen. for me because His power is made perfect in my weakness. Mm. Because I always thought missionaries are the strong people, you know. Mm. And I thought, ah, oh, He can marry somebody else and go, you know. I just mm. really didn't want to go. Mm. So that softened my heart. And then mm. also we went to a mission conference and what this guy in front of said something, you know, mm. was really like, really struck me. And he looked in my eyes, many, many people sitting, but he said to me, what would you say? And I'm like, whoa, what? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and then somebody next to me said, oh, I think you should do a mission trip, you know, and I'm like, really? Huh? What? Uh, hmm. mm. So God opened the way, so we went to Africa and why we were in Africa was so clear. There was no question that God used several things which happened in Africa with my heart really Mm. could not say no anymore Mm -hmm. and then God changed me from 100% against it to 100% for it and I'm a missionary Mm. by heart Mm. my heart loves it there's nothing else I would do in this world it's amazing Mm. (laughs) yeah amazing but maybe one important thing in this process is that like I said before that uh, you know our heart was still very full Mm -hmm. of our own selves Mm. Mm. yes not saying that it's still not, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, we still have this, uh, you know, tendency, obviously, but mm. very much like ideas of how it should look like, what it should be like, mm. where we should go. And, yes, all this. Yes. and that's what I'm saying through all these different stories. And we could, there's a lot more to add where God just slowly um, took all that away mm. and mm. said, OK, you know, um, it, you know, this is your own your own agenda, mm. but here's what I want to do through you, mm. right? Mm. Um, and first he had, so we had to learn a big lesson to learn in this whole mission endeavor is that God is way more interested mm. in what he's doing in you than mm. what he wants to do through you, mm. Mm. right? Amen. So we think we come to the mission field because God wants to do this amazing work through you. Amen. But he's doing amazing work in us. Yes. yes. Using the mission field. Yeah. Yes. Accomplishing things that he otherwise probably could not have accomplished. I mean, God can do anything, right? But he yes. used these things to accomplish that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me, it was really to, to break this idea that um, missions is the thing that makes me count as a being, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to do it for my own glory, like I said in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I just want to share quickly this one sure. incident sure. and uh, in when we were at home during the time with Elias, obviously yes. everything for me was falling apart. Ah. Now mm. this is the end, right? Mm. Yeah. Now my mission dream is just totally shattered. Mm-hmm. And uh, so um, there's this, this verse in Proverbs 19, verse 3, where it says, A person's own folly leads to their ruin, yet their heart rages against the Lord. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I was applied this to like, yeah. Oh, yeah, the unbelievers, obviously, right? Their own folly leads them astray and they, oh, God, why are you doing this? Mm. Yeah. But God is kind of telling me, this is you. Mm. Yeah. You know, your own folly mm. led you to your emotional ruin. Mm. Your own desires, your own um, desire for significance mm. led you to your ruin. Emotional ruin, obviously, right? Right. Uh, but my heart raged against the Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm. Why are you doing this? Mm. You know, mm. and, and God had to do it mm. to rid me of my false conceptions, of my false desires for significance and, and, and mm. accomplishments and who knows what, right? Mm. Maybe the guys can relate to that a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Um, right? So I guess there was one thing that the Lord really changed mm. through Ah, those events and, and, and many more, many circumstances that the Lord, that uh, we could have uh, died or, you know, yeah. where, where the Lord said, now I'm in control. I lead you away. You know, mm. I had, you know, that the incident where we could have gotten shot in the tribe yeah. there, the thing, I had three times dengue. Mm. I had a tree falling on my car wow. in the driver's seat in a mm. micro, you know, in a, in a storm in near Valencia, mm. you know, and different accidents um, in the <laughs> car and you know so everyone had the opportunity to, to like okay this could have been the end mm. but mm. God in his faithfulness just leads you through it mm. showing you that not only he is in control but that his goodness really prevails he is indeed Amen. good Amen. you know I had Amen. times where I was afraid 
of the goodness of God. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, God, if this is your goodness, leading me through all this hassle, almost killing me in this car accident, mm-hmm. maybe I don't want your goodness. Just, mm-hmm. just leave me alone. You mm-hmm. know? Just let me do my thing, but yeah. stop mm-hmm. being good to me, uh-huh. because this is pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, I'm just but saying this. Yeah, I'm just saying this because this is what, uh, where what my heart was at. Yeah. But slowly coming to the realization that uh, there is no other way for God to be good because this is His true nature. Mm-hmm. And the outcome of it is always Christ-likeness. Yet Amen. another step Amen. closer mm-hmm. to the character of Christ. That's what He's doing. Amen. So you He's... Know, yeah. Hearing your stories, it kind of reminds me of what uh, the Lord said to the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 29, verse 11. Mm -hmm. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, Mm -hmm. plans to give you hope and a future. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes we think about how, yeah, that's that's a good verse, right? Mm. We think about all the good plans of God, but when we look at the whole history of mm. what happened to them yes mm. if you were walking in their shoes as captives during that time mm, yeah. it is it would be difficult to say yes. mm. Mm. you have yes. good plans for me lord right yeah. Mm. Yeah. um just to add a little bit this is just the bigger story we told but there were so many more we had several mm. accidents mm. really big ones um also uh, especially for me <laughs> and then sicknesses which were very dangerous other than that with elias we had snake stories we had oh. lots of things oh, really wow. one thing after another <laughs> god brought us through all this we also had losses really emotional lo- losses from dear dear friends mm. who yeah oh. we're not really friends after all sad oh. to say yeah mm. but oh. people you trust and stuff mm-hmm. like this you know so lots of things which really ripped my heart mm. you know and also problems of family marriage all kinds of things yeah mm-hmm. really tough things i have tough. a question for you guys having gone through all of this all of the pain all of the losses why do you still say christ is enough mm. because of the losses i learned to say that christ is enough Uh because before you trust people before you trust things before you trust health you Mm. trust finances you trust your parents you trust your surroundings you trust your Germany your food your doctors whatever Mm. only in taking this away and only in breaking me apart Mm. I can say that because it says in the Bible not Mm. by might nor by strength but by my spirit declares the Lord or things God chose what is weak to shame the strong Mm. so that no human being might boast in the presence of God another one is really like my first my grace is sufficient Mm. (laughs) for you for my power says God is made perfect in weakness Mm. or to Jeremiah he says do not say I'm but a youth for to all to whom I send you you shall go and whatever I command you you shall speak do not be afraid and to Moses on the burning bush experience, right? I'm slow to speak. I cannot do it, you know. <laughs> and God says, the Lord said to him, who has made men's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Mm. Now, therefore, go and I will be with your mouth. Amen. And teach you what you shall speak. Mm. And so this is what we do, you know. We are the weak persons. We are not the perfect yes. at all. <laughs> we are the broken vessels. <laughs> So that Christ is shining through us and all the glory be to him. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. There's nothing about us. It's all about God. And Amen. I'm so thankful that I'm in this journey with him. Mm. Even though it broke me, mm. absolutely. Mm. But I can say more. Christ is really enough. Mm-hmm. He's the one who is living in me and who wants to be more and more my all. My all and all. To say this truly and with all my heart. Mm. And he's still so. in this process. Yes. Obviously, right? <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yes. Of, That's of right. There's no uh, end to this. Breaking us. Mm. And Until, Until we, we go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But he needs us to be humble. Mm-hmm. 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 If we are not humble, you know, we, we cannot be used by him. So I I mm-hmm. most mm-hmm. of our life <laughs> is the process of breaking us and making us humble so he can actually mm. use us and, and you know, do what he desires mm. through us. Mm-hmm. So that it's really his light. It was. It would really be God that shines through, and not yes. us. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is such 
Yeah. Such a beautiful discussion, yes. but we yes. need to wrap things up. Yes. Uh, because we'd like to ask time. final messages uh, you would like to share with our viewers or listeners to encourage them. We are not all, uh, we're missionaries in our own ways, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but for each one of us, all of us can relate that we have struggles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have struggles. So what is that final message you'd like to share with our listeners and viewers mm-hmm. about who God is when you struggle? Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe just a quickly, um, just really this idea that God indeed is good and always good and He cannot be otherwise. Yes. He cannot mm-hmm. ever not be good. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that's why delight in the Lord Re- enjoy God mm-hmm. and I think the w- worst times for me were when I doubted God mm. that led me down a drain of despair mm. where, I, where I only could cry out God save me from it and he did so he wants us to delight in him Amen. Amen. and for Carmen thank you for that Richard <laughs> For me, I could say I've been through many times when I had no one who understands me. No one really, not even my closest family, not even Richard, no one. And I had to face things which were so painful for me. And I remember these times when I was sitting in our mission home in the library between the bookshelves, just hanging there and crying to the Lord because I had no one else to understand me. And here, here he was, it was only by his grace that I'm still here. <laughs> and I can really testify that he is really the one who understands you. Mm-hmm. And he's inviting each one of us, come close to me, because he wants to share his heart with me. <laughs> he wants to be the lover of my soul. Mm-hmm. He wants to be the all we need. <laughs> He is the one we need. There is no one else, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so for me, he says, like, come to me. You know, come to me. It's an invitation. And so that's why we can come with all our burdens, whatever we are, whatever problems, little or big we have, we can just pour our heart out in front of him because he's the one where this is safe. Mm. He's yeah. the one where he understands. He's the one who holds us together. He's the one who wants to be glorified through us mm. and in us. Amen. Amen. So he says, come to me. That's the thing. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this very, very uplifting. I can truly say it's an uplifting episode with the Gab Myers. The picture I want to leave with our listeners and viewers is when you walk through the valley of mm. the shadow mm-hmm. of death, we have a choice. We can mm. focus on how dark it is, how scary it is, mm. how unfair it is but we can also choose to look at the person walking beside us Mm -mm. and who is that person none other than the lord jesus christ yes Yes. he walks alongside us the good shepherd shepherd. if he walks with us we can say you are enough god Mm -hmm. and i will walk through this valley and many 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 more valleys even if you do not bring me to a good place because mm. you are good yeah. hangtod may kinabuhi tama yes. ba ang yes. pagpronounce ko nun yes. Yes. Oy, but before that no <laughs> kwan lang kaning because this is a very very interesting uh, story and it has a continuation and so this will not be the Second to the last, but yes, or first, the first, first of the series, first. but of the series. more because first of many. Yeah, the stories that you are sharing are quite uh, uh, amazing, and mm. we definitely can testify, though, just like what Richard said, that God is always good, regardless. Amen. Mm. Amen. So see you next time for more, diba? listeners and viewers. Diba? We will have them more. <laughs> <laughs> and with that friends thank you so much for joining us for this this is the second episode of the Friday edition Friday stories of yes. coming to faith in Christ with your hosts Michelle Pastor JB and Bernie and uh, you are tuning in to Mango Mornings, Mornings. <laughs> right here on Mango Radio we continue to communicate, communicate the, the love, love of God, God. 
Friends, I'll be leaving you, will be leaving you with this song from uh, Victory Band. Tinanong namin uh, si Carmen and si Richard kanina kasi nakwento ni Kuya B na ano yun? Um, Kinanta niya to sa church. Oh! So, once again, this is Hangtud May Kinabuhi. I'm so sorry for my Bisaya. <laughs> this is, uh, once again, Mega <laughs> Mornings, the Friday edition. And uh, friends, we pray that you were blessed with the program and we'll see you again on our YouTube channel and on the radio for the replay. God bless you guys and have a wonderful weekend. Vielen Dank. Kalibutan Uban sarakong Katuyuan Iniksod Ong ko Sa kalangitan Mga bulan Nog Kabituunan Imong That song was brought to you by Everflex, a one-stop shop for all your electrical needs. They are located at Ramon Magsaysay Avenue, Corner Clan, Davao City. You may call them at 227-2663. Everflex. That song was brought to you by Light Talk for all your lighting needs. They are located at MacArthur Highway, Davao City. Or call them at 299-1450 or 0917-723-4928. Light talk. The views and opinions expressed in today's program are those of the host and do not necessarily state or reflect those of the company or its management.